Hello, this is Dr. Jason Munsell yet again. Uh, it is now about 5 o'clock on Thursday, and I wanted to say a little bit about Chapter 9. Um, love stinks, love stinks, yeah. yeah, yeah. Love stinks, J. Giles Band. Yeah, yeah, love stinks. It's a great video, by the way. Um, I, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than the book does, uh, and I do think, uh, again, it's tied to... Uh, issues of gender. Um, I think the book is really interesting, very obviously. Um, but again, it's sort of, uh, Han really loves the metaphor stuff. So he, he talks about how um, every marriage is different and every elected official has a somewhat different relationship to his or her electorate. Elector, electorate. The electric electorate. You know what I'm doing when I'm trying to advertise for something? I rock down to Electric Avenue, and then I make a flyer. Um. So, uh, but basically, nonetheless, nearly every marriage comes about and goes through similar stages. Courtship. The marriage ceremony. A honeymoon. And ends with either death or divorce. Electoral politics parallels these stages, especially at the presidential level. Hence, candidates woo the voters who say yes or no. If the answer is yes and the person is elected, there is a public ceremony that cements the bonds called the inaugural, in which the person elected vows fealty. What the hell is that? The Constitution. A kind of till death to us part. This is followed by a honeymoon which the marriage proceeds how the president dies in office or is placed at the polls by a new suitor or is impeached. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, so he's using that sort of framework to think about the relationship between the electorate and the electric electorate and the, um, the president. So there is a lot in this chapter. Uh, the marriage metaphor goes a long way. We've got issues of intimacy with the president, inaugural, is sort of a wedding, the honeymoon metaphor, the divorce metaphor. Go read it. Reading is fun. Fundamental. Uh, <laughs> I, love our, I love our book. You love your book so much. You should go marry it. Okay. Uh, going to focus on the inaugurals, though, here, because I'll let you read some of the other stuff. Um, the inaugural as marriage uh, metaphor. It creates a union or a bond. Uh, it is a unification ritual. I now pronounce you president and people. You may now kiss our asses. No, they did that before they, they got elected. Now they do whatever the hell they want. Unless, well, the first term now. Second term, maybe. Also showcases the transition in the life of our country. We are no longer single, or at least not single with this with, with this particular person. It's like presidentialmingle.com. Uh, it's sort of perceived as a rescue. Oh, I was so lonely before Trump came around. Trump turned me around. You had me at stink. <laughs> you had me at nope. Wrong. Uh, da, 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 da. Both are sort of religious and political. You got swearing of the Bible on the Bible and everything like that, which is not part well. I don't, I don't know. Uh, there are oaths. You go to care for those kids. What is it, populist? What is it, spectral? Yeah. Kids. Yeah. Uh, transforms our lives. We're, we're sort of in love with the president. Love. Love, sweet as reward. Blah, blah, blah. The love boat. I think I saw it. Wasn't Trump on love boat once? No, that was Fantasy yeah. Island. Um, but in any case, so I'll let you read what the book has to say. I like what Campbell and Jameson say a little bit better. Uh, there is an extra cool handout on Koala Connection that I put. For those of you who have been in my presidential rhetoric class, this stuff should not be new to you. And so... What I put on KC, and also please note that I am previewing uh, what you're going to be doing for your final examination. As I said uh, a while back in class, and what, it's also in the syllabus, uh, for the um, final examination, you will be writing uh, 
an inaugural address for whoever wins in November, whether it's Trump or Clinton. And so uh, it is a genre of speech, and so there is um, very uh, specific things that we need to see in this type of speech. Let's see if this comes up. And all of this, again, is taken from a different book. This is not in your book. So this stuff is very, very important. You need to pay attention um, as you're watching this wherever you are. Uh, so it's, it's an important uh, genre. Um, and uh, when I say C and J on this, it means Campbell and Jameson. Uh, and their, uh, their um, work on this and their book they talk about the importance of the inaugural speech, uh, how it's sort of an epideictic type of speech or ceremonial type of speech because you know it is a ritual, just like a, a wedding is a ritual. The inauguration ceremony is a ceremony. It is a ritual. It is a marriage per se. Um, and so that's important. And it also it's all about memoria, uh, which is uh, memory. Um, it, it's in part remembering these things uh, about American history, all these things that sort of craft us into uh, Americans, constitute us as a, as, as a public. Um, and uh, it's also marked by the nature of this, well, the ceremony itself. It is a marriage of sorts. It is a ritual uh, of transition. It is a celebration. Uh, it's a change in the identity of the people and the administration and the country, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, what do you do, or what do presidents, and by the way, this is not in any sort of order, like in my in an inaugural address, first you must do this, second you must do this, I mean, not in that sort of chronological order, but generally speaking, uh, we expect that uh, presidents uh, will say something in regards to these areas uh, first, or do these types of things. First, constructing the people, Con constituting the people. The president will say certain things that sort of shape or frame uh, the identity of the American people, it constitutes the people, the people, the body. Yeah. Uh, so people need to be unified because it was uh, it was a huge contest. Um, who am I going to marry? Am I going to marry Clinton or am I going to marry Trump? I can't decide. It's like it's like, like speed dating. This entire thing. But it's, no, it's really a long courtship starts yeah but in any case um, so we got to bring people together so that's one thing got to show unity 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 this is all about this is not about Republicans or Democrats this is not about left or right this is about America uh, also uh, oftentimes uh, folks need to if, if there's a particular um, something happened within the campaign or if there's a particular moment of, of uh, crisis or a particular moment of, of division uh, it's really important that um, that the president tries to create a sense of unity instead of disunity. Bring people together. Don't want national division. Want everybody together, which is going to be really interesting to see what happens because uh, you know a lot of people who don't see these two candidates as, as very popular. But we'll see what happens. Once the president unifies the people, then they can perform their role in the ritual as witness to it. Uh, that is, people are watching it. And often presidents explicitly indicate the role of the people in doing that. You're here watching it. You voted for me. So, like, you know, in a, in a marriage, it's like, does anybody, what's the thing? If anybody has any, says no, <laughs> what does it say? Speak now forever. Hold your peace. <laughs> they don't really do that in the inaugural, but in a sense, it's like, okay, you all voted for me. This is the ritual. This, this, is, this is it. This is the people have spoken. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, the right of presidential investiture, investiture that's sort of uh, uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, some inaugurals indicate that the actual giving of the address makes the president the president. Just the very fact that I'm giving this inaugural. Other presidents have take, given this inaugural. Blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about you know. uh, Nixon. Uh, also, uh, so the actual giving of it, sort of, just like when I, we say I do, the wedding ceremony makes people married. This makes somebody a president. Uh, also, uh, Campbell and Jameson say that the uh, inaugural uh, reenact the original process by which people and their leaders formed a more perfect union. So, just 